Hello dear chess lovers, expert on the site crossbook.com, Grandmaster Sergei Shipov is greeting you again today, commenting on the 10th game of the World Championship match between Kromnik and Anand. Today, Kromnik solidly won, Anand can extend the stress and fill the fort quite quickly in an equal position. Let's take a look at how that happened. Here, we see the raw munition variation of the Nim Savage defense. The opponents quickly played the well-known theoretical moves. After opening up the center, the sides actively developed their pieces, and we get a lively battle in which the Grandmasters showed all of their knowledge without any tactical tricks. After the move of rook d1, capturing the pawn on e2 is no good because of the move c4, and white gets two bishops for the rook and two pawns. In practice, white had an advantage here, but we don't take the pawn on e2, after which white pushes the knight from d5, offers to trade queens, which looks to be non beneficial for black, even though I played like this in 96 and even saved the game against the knight fish. Later analysis showed though that it's better for black to avoid the seduction and play the move on queen h5. Here, Kromnik used novelty, rook e1. Uh, earlier, the main moves were bishop e3 and bishop f4. The move rook e1 is quite subtle because it gives white an opportunity to keep his options open about where to put the bishop. c5 followed. That is a good development, even though black has to support the pawn. After bishop e3, Blake came up with a smart maneuver for the bishop, and there's the threat of, knight, of the knight jumping to c4. Coming answered with a sly move bishop f4. As we will see later, it was a successful provocative move, which a non pawn baited on. So starting from this moment on, the Indian Grandmaster's game became extremely weak. I'm not afraid to use this word, because he lost this equal position in 8 moves. Here black has a good move bishop f3, and a as well as a good move bishop d3. Especially bishop d3 is good, which revives the threat e5, and after which the knight can go on c4. Here there is a possibility of such a variation that black stands still and white has to play e5 first, in order to protect himself from black's e5. That leads to awful complications, which in my analysis show that black has enough counterplay. But Anand played e5. First of all, after bishop takes e5, black would have had major problems. For example, in the variation, there is material equality, but still the bishop is stronger than the black knight. And after Sam dancing by the white rooks, white moves the queen into the center, and there is the threat of the pawn attack on the king side, f4, e5. All in all, white has an advantage. Kromny claimed bishop e3, which isn't bad either. Now, the weakness of the square d5 is very serious, and on all the future variations of trading the light pieces, white puts the rook on d5, and that's quite unpleasant. I think Anand played well enough here. He played bishop g4, but it's possible that bishop f3 was more promising with the more energetic game with the later f5. For example, here to h3, it's good to play f5 and then actively attack down the long diagonal. For example, after bishop c5, uh, the black knight enters on the c4, and even though white takes another pawn, black actively gets a very good game. Here, there's a blow, knight takes f3, and to queen and takes f3, queen b2, and black captures on a1. Anand played bishop g4, again, not a mad move, but after the smart move queen a6, which prevents the move knight c4, Anand made a big mistake. He played f6, which made the bishop on a6 completely unsupported and drastically weakened the 7th horizontal. Of course, he should have played bishop e6, and after bishop f1, the strongest development is knight d7, and the knight hits on g4. After a4, th there's a threat of a5. Black made an attempt to intrude with a piece on c4, but after the correct move, rook b1, it was clear that it's not possible. For example, if bishop uh, goes to c4, and there's the trade, and rook takes b6 for the win of a piece. Here it was clear that the threat of a5 is very serious, and there's no defense against it. On on plane c4, after a5, risk moving the knight to a4, but that only led to a quick fall. Now in this position, Anand simply resigned. There is the threat of rook e7. If queen c6, then queen e7 wins. And to bishop f7, white started to get a hole for the black knight, and here the variations are very simple. White has many ways to reach a winning result. The best move here is a6, 
and after the knight actually saves himself, the result of the battle is decided by the very powerful pawn, a pawn a7. White is protecting it. There is the moment that it's not possible to capture twice on a7 because of the check on d8. And after black makes an opening, white plays queen c6, and there is no defense against the capture on d7. That's how Kromnik won this game. The score is 6-4 with an odd leading. Thank you for your attention.